These little guys, battle ropes, will absolutely change the way that you do high intensity interval training, no matter what level you are at. Whether you're just a beginner that's just getting started doing HIT, or you're someone that's experienced with doing plyometrics and HIT training, functional training, you name it. If you do those right, you're going to get a better metabolic result. And we're gonna dive into four different ways that you can use battle ropes. But before we get into the specifics and the technical aspect of this, I wanna give you an explanation as to why incorporating your upper body as much as possible in your HIIT workouts is going to be the key to getting better results. It's not getting the full body involved. There is scientific evidence that using the upper body specifically with high intensity interval training is going to get you better results. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday in the world of keto, fasting, and specific high intensity interval training tips. So make sure that you're keeping it locked in here. Make sure you turn on that little bell button so you can turn on notifications whenever I go live. And make sure you check out highly.com down in the description so you see the latest and greatest premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, so let's go ahead and break down why working the upper body with high intensity interval training is so imperative. You see, it's actually pretty common knowledge amongst the scientific community that when you work the upper body, you have a harder or greater work component. That just means that the body has to work harder in order to incorporate. So if you are working equally hard on your lower body as you are on your upper body, you're gonna get a higher heart rate and a higher blood pressure out of working your upper body. In fact, the Brazilian Journal of Physical Therapy actually published a study that found that literally by training the upper body, you got a higher heart rate and higher blood pressure, and it had to do with the peripheral resistance on the actual artery itself. You see, what happens is with larger muscles down in the lower body, like the legs, we have muscles that can assist the contraction of that arterial wall. So basically, the muscles in the legs are big enough to help push the blood along. That's, believe it or not, a pretty big reason to why we can actually run for longer distances versus do like a bicycle ergometer or arm ergometer, right? So what's happening is in your upper body, you have less muscle mass than the legs. So you don't have the muscle mass to squeeze the blood back a little bit. You're relying purely on the arterial wall. You're relying on the muscle contraction of the arterial wall itself. So you end up getting your heart to work a lot harder. And the whole idea with HIT, to be completely honest, is to get the heart rate really high and then drop it as fast as you can. So the cool thing is you get your heart rate elevated by using the upper body. It's actually gonna come down faster too because the transit time is a little bit less. It can actually come back to the heart and refill that left ventricle a little bit faster so your stroke volume stays nice and strong. The heart can work as hard as it needs to. Now, one of the reasons that makes training your upper body significantly better is the fact that you have less of a mean transit time. Now, what that means, it's not necessarily just about the time that the blood travels to your extremities, it's about the time the red blood cells spin in a particular area. So for example, the red blood cells are delivering oxygen. They're flowing through my arms and they're having to diffuse into capillaries and smaller blood vessels. That means the red blood cells are not spending as much time there. So they don't have as much time to oxygenate tissue and therefore go through the ATP coupling and ATC, ATP synthesis phase. So you're in a pretty unique situation where you actually have to pump more blood to get the same desired result out of moving the arm than you would the leg. So that's why battle ropes and things like that are a great, great thing to add into your HIT routine. Additionally, because the capillaries are so small, what happens is the blood has to be forced into these rapidly diffusing capillaries. If you're pumping blood down into your legs, you have your femoral artery, you have these arteries that are big mega superhighways running down your legs. So it can force the blood down and then it diffuses into capillaries. But in your upper body, you have lots of small capillaries and they start diffusing into them very fast. So I pump blood from the heart, it's going into my shoulders and it's rapidly diffusing into the tissue in my upper body, in my upper arm, into the multiple thousands and thousands of capillaries. So the blood has to be forced into these little teeny capillaries, therefore the heart is working harder. So let's go ahead and let's get into these movements. So here are four ways that you can use battle ropes, because quite frankly, battle ropes are commonly done wrong. Okay, people don't always do uh, battle rope movements right, and they actually lead themselves up to getting hurt. So the first one that I wanna show you is a traditional battle rope movement, okay? It's gonna be traditional, actually like using both arms and using the battle rope the way that you should. So if you look at how I'm doing this here, I'm sitting all my weight on my heels, okay? I'm not hopping. Okay, if you look at me hopping, you can see how my upper back and my lower back are getting incorporated. This is a specific kind of movement, don't get me wrong, but if you're just starting out with battle ropes, I don't recommend that you do that. And one of the ways that you can get around this is by using a little bit of a lighter battle rope. In this case, I'm using a heavier battle rope, so it's a lot easier for me to accidentally kind of get into that hop. But you do want to get yourself in that athletic stance. So we call it just the athletic position where you have a slight bend in the knees and you're sitting kind of in a partial squat. And this way, you can actually incorporate your rear delts, your anterior delts, your medial delts, 
delts, and of course the arms and triceps and that mid-back. You're going to use a lot of rhomboids and a lot of trapezius. So you just want to make sure that you're keeping cognizant of that, and you don't want to bring your arms up higher than about your forehead. Okay, unless simple movement, it's one that's going to get you a lot of rapid blood flow and get that heart rate elevated super, super quick. The next one that I want to show you is going to be single arm, and this is going to be more of a snake movement. Okay? So this is another one that you commonly see done, but you also commonly see it done wrong. You see, people will oftentimes, when they do the single arm movements, they get so much rotation and they bring their arms up so high that they get a lot of torque and twist to their hips and back. This can be good if you're trying to build a body that's like going to withstand a tackle, or like if you're playing football or rugby or anything like that. This is perfect for that because you're going to actually build that transverse abdominus and that core strength. But if we're trying to just get maximal heart rate, we want to keep the movement slow and controlled. So you want to sit back into the athletic position, and then you want to start slow, and then you want to rapidly speed up until you get in a rhythm. So you're doing really short little motions. You're only coming between like a, maybe a 12 and 16 inch area in front of your body with the ropes. This is allowing you to get the heart rate where we want it without constantly having a break. So what I mean by that is if you get your arms up too high, you're actually taking a little bit of a break on the muscle, which therefore you may not feel it. The heart isn't able to pump nearly as much blood because it doesn't have to. So we're not getting that same effect. Okay, the next one that I want to show you is a unique one. This one is where it is okay to come up over your head. And this is one that's overlooked. You don't see people doing them a lot. If you have a heavier rope, this one's great. Okay, these are going to be slams. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna treat your battle rope workout like med ball slams. But because of sort of the reverberation, the actual like overall long tail effect that you get from a battle rope and actually having to like really bring it up and get that wave to go all the way to the bar or wherever it's anchored, you're getting a different effect than you would with a med ball slam. With a medicine ball slam, you slam the med ball and it's done. Like right, like as soon as the ball is on the ground like or leaves your arms, the tension is off. With battle ropes, when you do a slam, the tension still remains because you have a long tail of that overall rope. So going to the slams with the battle ropes are a great way to incorporate the full body. And this is where it's actually okay to get a little bit more of a leap and hop up a little bit. But you're not trying to go fast. I want you to control these, like do reps of 10, sets of 10, excuse me, and go ahead and just slam and then recorporate, slam reincorporate the ropes again, and go ahead and just, you're gonna restart the movement. You're just doing what you can to keep it nice and controlled. This is more of a power move than anything else. Okay, and the next one that I wanna show you is taking that same thing, but making it a little bit more of a functional move off to the side. So we're doing that same slam, but we're coming off to one side. Okay, so you're going off to the left, back up, off to the right. Going back up to the left, then off to the right. Again, we're coming up overhead, and this is a little bit more of an advanced variation, so you do have to be careful with this a little bit. You don't want to tweak your back. You want to make sure you're keeping it under control. So if you add these into a mix, add these into a hit circuit, some of the best ways to do it are going to be upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. So I don't recommend going straight from battle rope movement into battle rope movement. Your heart rate's going to get so high that it's not going to be that good of a workout. The goal is get the heart rate high and then move into another larger muscle group so that you can actually get the overall muscular activity, the skeletal muscle, like actual recruitment, but your heart rate is high without having to make it high through another means. So what I mean by that is it takes a lot to get your heart rate super high doing plyo box jumps. What if I told you you could do some battle ropes, get your heart rate where you want it, and then be able to do half as many plyo jumps and get the same result? So it ends up working out great. Heart rate gets higher, you still get the plyo effect, and then you can just go through a circuit. I'll share more of this, and if you like these kinds of videos and you wanna know more about HIIT training and know how to do it properly, then make sure you're keeping it locked in here, but more importantly, comment down below and let me know if you wanna see these types of videos. I don't always do workout content, I'm mainly nutrition, so if you guys wanna see these types of videos, you have to ask me. All right, guys, see you in the next video.